Hello, everybody. How are you out there? Um, hope everything's going well. And I uh, hope you're having um, an okay day. Great to see so many of you on the stream. And uh, please feel free to drop your questions into the chat as we go. I think I might have uh, fixed some of my, uh, my streaming issues, so we'll see. Uh, we'll see. Right now it looks like uh, very, very blurry, so hopefully that's going to buffer out. I'm just going to pause that because I don't want to look at my, my very blurry stream. All right. Uh, so we have been doing equilibrium. And we are talking about right now about the equilibrium when the effect on equilibrium of temperature. So the thing to keep in mind when we're talking about equilibrium is we're really talking about the balancing act that comes from this equation. So all of these equations are are this idea that there is some sort of constant and that constant represents the ratio of concentrations of product so in this case SO3 raised to the power of its uh, raised to some power divided by the pro the reactants raised to the power of their coefficients as well. And in this case, we are adding in, all we're doing is we're adding in this idea that there is energy over here. So there's like delta H, something like that. A change in temperature. Now watch out, sometimes you're going to write the change in temperature, the change in energy as a product here. Other times they'll write delta H and they'll note the delta H is negative to show that it's a product or positive to show that it's a, re, uh, it's a reagent. So, yeah, so, and so I always, you know, I don't know if I want to put delta H, I guess delta H is kind of okay in my equation here, but we are really thinking about balancing this equation. Always, 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 this equation must be equal to this number at the point of equilibrium. So if you change something, if for example you go in and you add temperature, you add more of this value, then you must have to increase these values here and decrease this value in order to balance out that equation. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, it's, it can be tricky to wrap your head around um, around this idea that uh, you do that when you increase one thing, the response is going to be to decrease that whole side. So in this case, we're increasing the temperature. We would be increasing the product side. So all of the product side has been unbalanced. There's extra product essentially. So now the response of the system, the way the system is going to deal with that stress is it's going to consume some of this reactant that's going to be consumed after, after we've heated it up. Some of that excess is going to be used up and some of the uh, reactant is going to be increased in concentration. So anytime you make a change, Anytime you, you tip the scale, the response is going to be a counter response. I had one person describe this to me as like when, you, when someone goes to push you, uh, you know, the first time they push you, you fall over. But if you want to respond to that push, when they go to push you again or when you're ready for it and you want to reach like an equilibrium, you don't want to fall over what you immediately start to do is you start to take a more, a stronger stance. You might, uh, you start to push forward and so that the two forces become equal. If, uh, if one force is pushing, you know, here we're, we're equal and then suddenly my right hand starts to push harder. If I don't want my hand to go right over to the, uh, to the wall, I'm going to have to increase the force on the other side to bring it back. And 
if this is the point of equilibrium, I'm going to push. I'm pushing really hard with my right. And then my left is now responding by pushing in kind. And so now they're both pushing hard. And they are slowly, I'm actually having to push more on my left than my right. Even though my right was the initial hard push, my left is, has to push a little bit more to try to get it back to that center position, back to that equilibrium. So in the reverse reaction, the reaction absorbs 20 kilojoules, whereas in the forward reaction, the reaction uh, releases 20 kilojoules. So if we think about it going this way, it's an absorption. If we think about it going this way, it's a release. So when we apply to apply heat to the system, then um, so the equilibrium. So think of the heat as a product. Therefore, if the heat increases, if the heat increases, if you increase the temperature, the concentration of heat increases. So the equilibrium will shift left, the, uh, and you'll and the reactant yield will increase. If the temperature is decreased, then the temperature will move to the right. So let's look at one more. So here the conversion of dinitrogen tetraoxide is reversible and temperature dependent. And we notice that the delta H is a positive value. So the positive value suggests that it is a reactant. So positive delta H equals reactant negative delta H is the equivalent of a product. So if you it was predict the effect of the, of the, on the position of the equilibrium that results from increasing the temperature. So increasing the temperature, we can rewrite this as 20 as N2O4 plus 58 kilojoules, sort of kilojoule per mole probably gives us 2NO2. So we are initially discussing a stress where we are increasing the temperature. So the stress is increase. So here's our stress. Increase T. And so the response, response, oh, response, and response, which we call a shift right. So I'm just going to type that out a little bit. So uh, since uh, delta H is positive, it's positive, heat is a reactant for this reaction. So increasing temperature increases product yield. Uh, some other ideas that you should be comfortable with explaining would be things like um, we can look at this also as uh, the forward reaction is endothermic, reverse exo, exothermic. So adding heat has a greater effect on the forward reaction. So forward, forward reaction increases speed or rate, which equals more product. New equilibrium. Uh, what are some other ideas here? Probably the most important one. I just had another one in my mind. Um, extra heat allows for 
more particles to overcome the no, I don't want to do that one. Yeah, I'm happy with I'm happy with that first that other statement. That's that's the one I wanted to make. Okay, great. So there is an interesting concept here about the K E Q and temperature. There is some potential that the K E Q uh, could have a temperature dependence. So, because so what you're really happening with, and it really it connects well with our previous statement here, uh, which does not want to let me write right now. Right now, okay. So if we think about what I just wrote, um, I've just actually written something a little bit more profound than I meant to, which is that if the forward reaction is endothermic, so the adding of heat has a greater effect on the forward reaction. So that forward reaction increases in rate. So um, this actually means that there's potential because the, there isn't an equal effect from temperature that you actually could change the rate constant of that forward reaction versus the rate constant of the reverse reaction. And they, those changes might be uh, different from one another. So uh, changing the temperature favors one reaction over the other. So a shift in the value of KEQ is likely. Depends on how much you're cha changing the temperature, but you know, uh, so we are not only just, not only will there be a new uh, equilibrium concentrations, but they will have a new KEQ value at this, this new temperature. Something like that. This is, in, in fact, the only time where we should see a KEQ change uh, is uh, through a temperature change. And that's because uh, we can think about this as um, this is because is because the shift of equilibrium is due to energy, which is not a part of the KEQ equation. It's actually a very simple reason. Um, we don't include K, we don't include energy in our KEQ equation. So when we increase or decrease the amount of energy, it does have an effect. But that's only because this is this little equation here is a thought experiment, right? This is not. This is. You know, this is a thought experiment. Thought experiment. Delta H is not in the equation. So when you add delta H, you would actually have to change KEQ. That must, that's another thing that has to change.
The one that always bothered me is the next one. I, I don't like this. Uh, it, 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 this is how it is, but I, it really bugs me. But this is the next one that's weird. Is that um, uh, the adding of a catalyst is uh, does not have any effect on equilibrium. Do not have an effect on equilibrium concentrations. The reaction mechanism of the reverse and forward reactions are equally changed by the catalyst. So the rates remain equal at equilibrium. Even KEQ stays the same at the same temperature. And to me, this is this one always uh, sits there. It, it feels almost chemically wrong, but I have not yet to find anybody who says otherwise. Um, and uh, it, it's just a little bit weird, I think. I think it's a little strange, but uh, it does make sense when you think about it. The forward and the reverse reaction are equally changed by the catalyst, and so this catalyst gives an equal, an equally good route for going forward or backwards. So when you add the catalyst, you don't change the concentrations. You just change how quickly concentrations can be reached. Uh, I think that's the only change you might be able to see. Uh, it might change. No, you know what? I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna go there. I don't want to get into that uh, speculation. Okay. All right. So those are. So let's. Uh, let's summarize that. So the effect of changes in the, uh, the, the effect of uh, changes to a system. So all reactions, if you increase the reactant or decrease the product, then you will, I'll just do this by typing by hand. If you increase or decrease the product, then the then this is, the KQ is constant. Uh, increasing or decreasing product will be a shift to the right. Okay, so this is increasing reactant or decreasing the product. Either way, you're talking about a a shift like this. So you need to. All right, this is our little teeter totter here. So we need to shift this way to respond. Okay, so we've stressed the system to be tilted this way, so we must apply a directional shift to the right. If you decrease the reactant or increase the, or increasing product, that's another mistake in there. I'm trying to keep track of some of these mistakes as we go. This is what page, 42, equilibrium, page 42, square product, okay, uh, or increasing product, then you have a sort of a tilt this way, and so you need to move some material backwards, just like you need to move some mass that way to reach equilibrium. The equilibrium constant is still constant. And the shift is now to the left. Using a catalyst, we still get a constant and no change. That's what we were talking about just a second ago. That applies to all reactions. If you increase the temperature for an exothermic reaction, increasing the temperature of an exothermic reaction, then we can think about that as being tilted this way. So we need to shift, uh, nope, 
products, right? Being tilted the other way. We have put extra product in, so we need to shift backwards. The, equi the equilibrium constant will be changed. Don't know how it's gonna change. We might be able to guess actually, but I don't wanna guess right now. I have a, I have a speculation, but I'm gonna keep it to myself. Uh, and so this is a shift to left. Decrease in the temperature means that you are decreasing the amount of product. So the product side got lighter. So we have to shift to the right. We're going to have a change. Exo the endothermic, endothermic and increasing re increasing temperature means you're going to be increasing the product side because you're applying stress here. So we're going to shift to the right. That's going to be a change. Decreasing the temperature means that you have less, less product. So we have less. And so we need to shift backwards to match. So we need to shift left. We have had a change. An equal number of pro reactants and products for gas molecules, and you change the volume, you will have no effect. No change. No change. You have more gaseous products than reactants. So, and you go to decrease the volume. Okay, so let me think about it. More products than reactants, and you're going to decrease the volume, which increases concentration. You're increasing the concentration of the product side more. So let's just, I need, a, I need an equation. I can't figure this out. So let's just say A forms 2B, right? That would be more product than reactant. Okay. Okay, so more products than reactants and we're gonna decrease. So then the concentration will be higher for, will be more affected for the product side. So I need to shift backwards. This is constant. Okay, I'm increasing the volume, so the increase in volume means that the that the right side will get lighter or get lower concentration faster. And so I still am going to have a constant here, but now the shift is going to have to go to the left or to the right. I can do left and right. You know, it's a, left and right have always been hard for me. I don't know why. All right, fewer products than your reactants. So this is something like uh, 2A forms 1B. Then a decrease in the container will have a larger effect on A than on B. So it'll be shifted this way. So we need to make more, uh, our scale will be shifted that way. This is again constant. So we need to shift to the right. And increasing will have a larger effect on the side with more particles. So it'll have a dip like this, and we would have to uh, shift backwards. And this is a left shift. Okay, so there we go. That's all of them. That's the whole table filled out. Whew, that's, uh, that's a lot to think about. Now, I'm thinking that at this point, it's probably a good spot to take a break on this. Uh, we've been talking about it for a long time. We have a lot of questions there. And then we get to the predicting equilibrium, which is the fun part. Okay, so let's do maybe one question together and then we will uh, break for the day. You can finish the rest of the questions as homework. And uh, we will come back tomorrow for predicting equilibrium, which is uh, where things get extra fun. And uh, remember, if things are going too quickly, 
you're more than welcome to uh, to slow down. You can uh, you know watch an older video again. Um, I'm just gonna keep sort of pumping the videos out and the live streams out. And uh, but my expectation is not necessarily that you're staying with the class, but that you're you know you're chipping away at it, right? Chip away at it a little bit at a time, <clears throat> and then send me messages, send me an email, send me um, talk to me through the hangout. Uh, to say, hey, I don't understand this, or I don't, I, I need another video on this, and then I, I'll spend an extra, I'll take an extra class, or I'll take an extra minute to uh, make a video that directly addresses a common issue. Okay, well, uh, let's do this one question, and then we'll see how it goes. For the reaction of PCl3 plus Cl2 gives us PCl5, so that's phosphorus trichloride plus chlorine gives us phosphorus pentachloride. Predict the effect on the position of equilibrium that results from increasing the total pressure by decreasing the volume. So let's think about this. We have uh, right now K is equal to product PCl5 divided by reactant. So a change in concentration will have a larger effect on the reactants. So the reactants will have a much higher uh, dependence on that volume. So an increase in pressure is equivalent, is the same as saying concentration going up. So think about it here that we are kind of saying, I'm just going to get rid of this here, we're kind of saying that we're going to increase, increase, increase as our stress. So the stress is that all the volumes are increased, all the concentrations have been increased, but this means that to reach equilibrium we're going to have to consume ex uh, excess of one of the two sides. So that we can rebalance everything. And in this case, it looks like we have two arrows on the bottom and we have one arrow on top. So that two arrows on the bottom means that we're going to have to respond by moving our moving some extra matter. Or, you know, maybe let's go to that little. I, I've been liking this this diagram here. So I'm going to draw it out here so that it's easier for me to draw. So let's put let's put my products here or my reactants over here. Let's put my product over here. My little arrow. And then let's think about this. Okay, so we have two arrows on the right. So the change is like this. Right? We got two arrows down, we've got two little two of these red arrows. So we've made this side very heavy. And so in order to come back from that stress, I am going to have to respond. The change that I need, right, is going to be this way. So this is the change. Change. Shift. Right. This is the stress, and that's the change. Shrink that down. Get rid of this. So that's sort of that teeter totter idea. So this is, so this one is going to be a shift right. Uh, there you go. Injecting more Cl2 without changing the volume. So we are talking about a, let's write out our equation here one more time. So I just, I love writing equations. So PCl5. So think about it this way. Um, this is another one I just remembered just a second ago. Is I used to do something like this. I would draw a little arrow, 
And then from the arrow, uh, I would try to uh, draw, uh, I would fall, I would think about falling down from that high arrow. So I've increased my concentration and I'm going to go down towards the, um, hmm. Oh, that's not bad. Okay, yeah, I like this. So um, let's use like sort of a vectors. If you remember vectors from your physics class, you might not. That's okay. Uh, think about going sort of uh, tail to tip. So take your arrow and connect it to an arrow to a to one of these two uh, arrows, and we always have to connect it from uh, tip to tail. So starting from the top point, we connect it here, and we would think that this is the arrow that is affected. So the forward reaction is the one that gets affected. So we're going to go to the right. And I'll show you what that looks like in a second um, as we do this again. So increasing the temperature, uh, I think I can make this, I can take this analogy pretty far here. This method. Okay, so this is a exothermic reaction. So in an exothermic reaction, we think about uh, we think about the reaction uh, producing heat. So plus heat. We know how much it is. It's ninety two point five, but that doesn't matter. Uh, and then we are going to stress the system, right? So we're going to stress the system by putting an arrow on it. And then we're going to go from tip to tail for the change. So tip to tail is over here. So we are going to see a shift to the right. Boy, that's pretty good. I like this. I kind of did something like this last year, but never quite as clean. And this is good. I, I'm liking this a lot. I hope this is going to work out for the rest of, the, of this unit. All right, so that's going to be a shift to the left. Yeah. So increasing the volume of the container is going to decrease all of our, uh, our volumes. And so let's see if we can do that. PCL3. CL2. This is the one where I'm I'm a little bit concerned. How can I do decreases well in this new format? Hmm. Okay. Well, this one doesn't hmm. Tip to tail. So we are decreasing. I really like this. I was I'm thinking about it. Hopefully you you know the answer already. I'm just trying to think about what, which way I should do this. So I I liked that it's the higher concentration that controls things, right? So in this case, maybe it just doesn't work for pressure changes. It's not quite as clean an example, but we can think about it that the overall change here is this one, this side is more affected. So this one has is uh, decreased more, decreased more. I'll think about the tail thing and see if I can think of another example of how to do that. Decreased more, so then the we can kind of think that concentration-wise, this one has a higher concentration, so we are going to move this way. And I'm just trying to think about the best way to represent that in this new fun little format. So we have excess, we have more, more PCL5. Uh, or less affected. I don't know what to say here. Less the de less decreased. So we get a shift to the right. Okay, and then adding a catalyst has no effect on. 
concentration. All right, I'll let you play around with the other ones for today, and I uh, will possibly come back and uh, do some work throughs for the other ones uh, once I do some other videos for the rest of the lessons here. But uh, that's it for today, so take the next couple minutes, and uh, you've got about 13 minutes if you think about your class time. So I would really encourage you to continue uh, on with this page and try to finish it up. And if you have any questions, then send me a message in the, uh, in the Hangout, and I'll uh, hopefully talk to you there. Once that Hangout is at full mass, then we will actually hold a class uh, discussion day one time, and, uh, or a couple times, I guess, because we're going to have lots of time to uh, try lots of different things. All right, uh, best of luck to you, and we'll talk to you uh, soon enough.